as a stage manager, do you even need a portfolio? What about a website? My name is Kent, and this is your Half Hour Call. Attention cast and crew, this is your Half Hour Call. Half hour to the top of the show. Half hour. Alrighty, friends, we are back with yet another episode of the Almost Complete Guide to Stage Management. We are continuing our conversation about marketing yourself as a stage manager, and today we are talking about portfolios and websites. But if this is your first time here, welcome, my name is Kent, and you are watching Half Hour Call, where we're dedicated to shining the spotlight on technical theater. So if you want how-to videos, interviews with industry leaders, and insider theater updates, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss another video. And be sure to stick around to the end of the video where I will share my top tips for taking your website from good to great. Let's rip the band-aid right off. I have never needed a physical portfolio. I've had one, but I've never used it. And thank goodness I didn't because it wasn't very good. Unless you're going to a conference like SCTC or USITT, I don't think you need a physical portfolio. Most interviews outside of those conferences seem to happen over the phone or on a video chat platform like Zoom, and so it may not be worth the time and money it takes to put together a physical portfolio. A website, on the other hand, can be extremely useful. While I don't think anyone's gotten a job exclusively because of your website, if you make it right, you get to control the first thing that pops up when anyone Googles your name, and that is a very powerful tool. Before we get into the specifics, let's talk about the mindset you should be in when creating both a physical portfolio and a website. I think a lot of stage managers get trapped in the mindset of making a pretty presentation of all of their work for someone to peruse from start to finish. However, that doesn't really reflect the reality of how your portfolio or website will actually be used. You're not creating a coffee table book, it's a marketing tool. Let's start with portfolios because I frankly have less experience creating them. The trap to avoid is thinking that the potential employer is going to take the time to thumb through your entire book. In reality, your physical portfolio is most likely going to be used by you as a visual aid during an interview to help you tell a story. Likewise, a website is mostly going to be used to find specific things about you. Maybe something on your resume intrigued them and they want to know a little bit more. Maybe they heard your name from a colleague and want to know more about you before sending you an email to set up an interview. In both scenarios, usability is key. It's a tool to find information, not a journey you're taking the viewer on. But what should you include in a portfolio, whether it's a physical one or on your website? Resist the temptation to fill your portfolio with paperwork you certainly don't need a whole prompt book. Generally speaking, the people hiring you have been doing this for longer than you have, at least for a while into your career. So you don't need to explain to them what a stage manager is, they know. Instead, highlight what makes the project unique or challenging, or highlight an area in which you felt you really shined and have examples to back that up. Also, and especially if you are applying for internships and apprenticeships, examples that show growth and development are always a good idea. On my website, I have four different run sheets that each get better and better to show growth. And remember, paperwork is not your job. Paperwork is a tool that helps you to do your job. If you were a contractor, I would not be interested in a picture of a hammer alone. I'd be interested in a picture of the home you renovated and how you selected that hammer, why you selected that hammer, and the ways in which that hammer helped you do your job. Honestly, I don't have many strong opinions on physical portfolios. Hopefully someone down in the comments will have some more feelings than I do. But I just keep in mind general document design. Make it function correctly and then make it look nice. If you have fonts and colors on your resume, it could be a nice touch to include them in your portfolio. PowerPoint is a great tool to make attractive documents with a lot of pictures, since adding a picture doesn't mess up all of your formatting like it tends to do on Microsoft Word. And remember, these physical portfolios will generally be a tool that you use during the interview where you'll be explaining the relevance of what you're showing, so making the text more succinct will likely be your friend here. For websites, navigation is everything. Everything. The average time someone spends on my website is 1 minute and 33 seconds. If you don't make it easy to navigate, people will bounce and not see your content. The good news is that it doesn't have to be complicated. Generally, you'll want a landing page, an about me page, a portfolio, a resume, and a contact page. You may want a latest updates or a what's new page if you plan on keeping it up to date, but no what's new page is better than an out of date what's new page. My website is a bit odd as I'm both a stage manager and an actor, and it's also become the online store through which I sell stage manager ducks and spike sticks and all of those things. 
There are lots of free website builders out there. I've used Squarespace in the past, but at the time you couldn't edit it on mobile and it had a lot less freedom with templates. Now I use Wix and love it. No matter what hosting platform you use, select a template that you love and go from there. If you want a custom domain, which looks more professional, but isn't necessarily required, the cheapest plan at any of the major web hosting websites should be more than enough for your online portfolio. It's going to take more time to set up your website than you think it will, especially if this is the first website you've built. So set aside some time and if you have a deadline like a conference or convention, try to start earlier to give yourself a few more days than you think you need. Pro tip, if you've purchased a custom domain and are working on your site, put up a custom under construction site to let people know that they've made it to the correct domain and to check back for updates soon. So what should be on each page of your website? Well, that's really up to personal preference, but make it easy to find information. Here's what I recommend. First, I recommend hitting the like button for the YouTube algorithm. For your landing page, a large photo of you in action looks great. Clearly identify your name, that you're a stage manager, and include a call to action, usually in the form of a button that says something like see more or enter site. For the about me page, this is where you can include more personal photos and information. Assume your visitors will only read the first few sentences. So what do you absolutely want them to take away from that page? Put that first and put everything else later. On your portfolio page, this content should be governed by the same concepts we talked about for physical portfolios. I like to organize by show, including some production photos and a description of the show's unique challenges, plus a couple of buttons to download relevant paperwork samples if you want. For the resume page, I like to have it as a photo on the page itself and as a downloadable PDF. You can have it as text, but I find the columns are tricky to get right on both desktop and mobile, and it'll most likely be almost completely unreadable on one or the other. And finally, the contact page should have a form where people can contact you. This should be pretty easy to set up with your web hosting software. Generally, the form submissions will get sent to the email linked to your account, but the people who submit the forms won't have access to your actual email address. Once you've got your website set up, the most important step in creating it is to test it. Send it to a friend or multiple friends and have them try to break it. Test all the links, all the downloads, all the forms, all the videos, everything. Have them test it on mobile and desktop too. Making a website has a lot of moving parts and it's easy for one or two to slip through the cracks. And now it is time to share my top five tips for building a website. Number one, make sure all links are clearly labeled. Click here for tickets versus just click here. There are enough fishy things on the internet. We don't want anyone thinking your website is one of them. Number two is check your mobile site every time you edit your desktop site. Editing your desktop site will often automatically make your mobile site optimized, which is rarely optimal. Double check before publishing that everything is in the correct order and there aren't massive spaces between objects. Number three, don't ignore search engine optimization. Follow your web hosting services advice and name pages, create keywords, and make it easy for people to find your content. Number four, don't include the abbreviation SM in your domain. It means other things to other people, other places on the internet. And that is all I will say on that. Number five, don't include your email address or phone number as text on your website, or phishing software might mean that you'll get a lot of spam. Instead, if you feel comfortable with it being public, put it on your resume in a PDF so that phishing software cannot read it. If not, your contact form will be more than enough. Let me know down in the comments below if you have any advice for people putting together a physical portfolio or a website or any other marketing materials. Thank you so much for liking, commenting, and subscribing. My name is Kent, and this has been your half hour call. Find the perfect gift for the stage manager in your life at the Half Hour Call store. Now with free shipping on all domestic orders. New products added frequently. Visit KenJamesCollins.com store to shop now.